a total ban on a classic ingredient, specific rules for conversation, and a clever way of avoiding a very royal assassination. Keep watching for more rules the royals have to follow at their dinner parties. If you're unfamiliar with royal dinner protocol, you might assume the royal family favors a wide variety of dishes for their meals. However, there's always a set menu in place. Former royal chef Darren McGrady has revealed that at Buckingham Palace, meal planning was a must, and Queen Elizabeth II was typically sent a menu book to go over and select what dishes she did or didn't want to eat. According to McGrady, her menus were always prepared days in advance and were to be followed religiously. While he said the queen preferred food from their estate, such as game birds, pheasants, and grouse, he also claimed that she absolutely loved anything that contained dark chocolate. A whole gang of chocolate! <clears throat> I need it badly! Still, McGrady noted one particular item that was not welcome during meals. He told Marie Claire the queen would never have garlic on the menu. She hated the smell of it, she hated the taste of it. Similarly, McGrady has previously reported that dinner was typically something like grilled sole with vegetables and salad, and also revealed that evening meals never featured potatoes, rice, or pasta. For traveling royals, another big no-no is shellfish due to the possibility of contracting a foodborne illness. The royals also avoid rare meats, spicy food, and tap water during their travels. There is one other item that is usually banned from the royals' menus. In 2008, animal rights activists were pleased when it was revealed that Prince Charles had declared that foie gras would never appear at a royal feast. The process in which foie gras is made is considered by many to be gruesome, and has even been referred to as torture in a tan. It involves a duck or goose being force-fed with corn using a tube inserted in its throat. This will continue for anywhere between 12 to 28 days before the animal is eventually killed. When you look at how foie gras is produced, it's very, very clear that for significant periods of time, none of their basic welfare needs are actually being met. Perhaps it's no surprise that the Prince of Wales reportedly also considered revoking the royal warrant from his favorite store, the House of Cheese in Tetbury, for selling foie gras. The deputy of the household at Clarence House also stated at the time that there is a policy to ensure that the royal chefs don't purchase foie gras. Justin Kurswell, a vegetarian's international voice for animals, has said that his organization was very pleased with the decision. At the time, he said, Foie gras is seen as very posh, and the heir to the throne is probably the poshest person in Britain, so for him to ban it is very good news. If you're attending a royal dinner, you'll want to make sure to look your very best. However, if you yourself are a royal, there's a strict set of rules already in place that must be followed. Everything from tights to nail polish colors matter if you want to be in the presence of Queen Elizabeth II. If you're a royal woman, the queen highly prefers neutral polish or bare nails over brightly colored ones. Female members of the family must always wear tights too. And royal expert Victoria Victoria Arbiter has stated that this protocol is the only hard, steadfast rule in terms of outfit etiquette. Still, this rule has been broken in the past by both Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton. Expect a costume change or two as well. Darren McGrady told Marie Claire that after enjoying afternoon tea by the fireplace, the royal family would leave to get changed for dinner. He said, They'd come down in dressy ball gowns and sit at the table, like a Downton Abbey dinner. Attending a royal dinner might sound like a dream come true for some people. However, due to the royal etiquette standards, mealtimes could get a bit awkward if certain rules were not followed properly. For example, no one can sit down before the queen takes her seat. Dinner companions also have to mimic the monarch's eating habits throughout the entire meal. In other words, if the queen stops eating, you must too. Ex-royal butler Paul Burrell once remembered to OK Magazine an occasion on which this protocol accidentally wasn't followed. He said, I was once on the Royal Yacht Britannia in the South Pacific and the Queen was hosting a dinner for a local prince. As it turned out, the prince forgot to watch the Queen, instead mixing up some fruit with sugar and cream. Burl continued, He was about to raise the bowl to his lips to drink it when he looked at the Queen and realized he had made a terrible mistake. Still, according to Burl, the Queen chose to ignore her guest's blunder. She and instead took a sip from her finger bowl so as not to cause the prince any embarrassment. 
If you're ever invited to have a meal at the palace, you'll want to remember to follow royal protocols before beginning a chat with the queen herself. Firstly, if attending a royal function, you should address the queen accordingly, first as your majesty, and then as ma'am for future responses. Likewise, the queen should never be referred to as your highness as that title is only meant for certain senior royals. You should also never try to start a conversation with a member of royalty, instead waiting for them to initiate a chat. As the queen is usually the hostess for dining events, guests should expect her to follow specific conversation protocols. The person seated to her right is considered the guest of honor and will be the first to chat with her. However, if placed on her left, you must wait before engaging in conversation. Just ask Formula One star Lewis Hamilton, who once accidentally broke this protocol. She was to my right and I started to talk to her and she was like, um, <laughs> she was like, no, you, you, you speak that way first and I'll speak this way and I'll come back to you. There's at least one dinner rule that even certain members of the royal family don't seem to be a fan of. Per tradition, couples aren't supposed to be seated next to one another at the table. This reportedly customary royal rule is meant to encourage mingling, or as Grant Harold, royal etiquette and former butler to Prince Charles, told Insider, Normal dining rules state that couples are split up when they enter the dining room. The idea is to mix couples up to help with conversation. However, the same article noted that Prince Harry Harry and Meghan Markle preferred to ignore this tradition, and would sit next to one another instead. Additionally, it's alleged that the Duchess of Sussex criticized these rules for being exclusive and traditional. According to royal insider Stephanie Jones, the couple's choice reportedly led to fewer invites to royal dinners. Seating at royal dinners is not solely just to split up couples, however. In fact, everyone in attendance is expected to sit exactly where they're told. In total, there are three rules specific to seating arrangements that all guests must follow. First, the word placement should always be pronounced the French way. That's placement. The second is the rule that couples should never sit next to one another. Third, each guest should always remain in their assigned seats to avoid ruining the seating point. Plans. In 2008, Buckingham Palace curator Catherine Jones told CBS, For a normal state banquet, the actual laying of the table takes three days, although preparations usually take short of a month before the event. Accordingly, these plans include polishing silver, choosing silverware placements, folding 170 napkins, and properly placing each guest's glassware. Jones also stated, The seating plan is worked out by the master of the household's department, who are in charge of all the ceremonies ceremonial stuff that goes on in the palace. But the queen has the final say. With plenty of focus on dinner prep, formal wear, and seating arrangements, is it any surprise that dinner guests are also expected to follow proper royal etiquette when it comes to the actual act of eating? There are some 2,000 pieces of cutlery here, many of them hundreds of years old, but I guess nobody minds a bit of second-hand cutlery, do they, when the queen puts it down? Indeed, there are quite a few rules regarding silverware that royals are expected to remember. The first is how one holds their knife and fork. As etiquette expert William Hansen told Marie Claire, traditionally cutlery is held with the knife in the right hand and the fork in the left. He added that this tradition dates back to when men would carry their swords and daggers in their right hand. Still, Hansen acknowledged that it's considered acceptable to switch the silverware in modern times. However, royals are still expected to hold their cutlery in a traditional manner, using their index fingers as guides for placement on the knife and fork. He continued, As so much royal duty involves soft diplomacy over dinners, having control over their cutlery and food is an essential part of their toolbox. Another important thing for royals to remember when it comes to silverware is making sure knives and forks aren't clinking against the plate. According to Hansen, making any sort of irritating noises with utensils might not be against protocol, but it's still something one should definitely try to avoid. Silverware aside, royals must also remember the rules for handling teacups. After all, manners still matter during tea time, and how one holds their teacup is essential. While handling the cup, you should grip the top handle with your thumb and index finger, and use your middle finger to support the bottom of the handle. If you're drinking coffee, you should put the index finger through the handle. Also, the handle of the teacup should always be placed at 3 o'clock. Additionally, a royal lady must never forget to take sips from the same spot on their cup when drinking. This rule is followed to avoid an 
ending up with multiple lipstick stains on the rim of your cup. In fact, this sipping protocol applies to anything you're drinking, not just tea. Similarly, while chatting with Marie Claire, etiquette expert William Hansen reaffirmed the aforementioned royal protocols. He said, Members of the royal family usually hold the teacup pinching their thumb and index finger between the handle, with their other fingers following the shape of the handle for support. And if you're wondering about the well-known pinky in the air placement, Hansen stated, It is not, contrary to popular belief, sophisticated to stick the little finger out when drinking tea or coffee. While the royal family's mealtime etiquette is notably quirky, this one napkin tip is actually a very useful practice to avoid making a mess. The royal family follows a specific method when using napkins during a meal. While at the dining table, instead of simply placing their napkins on their lap, family members will fold the napkin in half and use its concealed part to wipe away any food stains. If not using the napkin, they will instead place it on their knees and, when needed, pick it up by its corners. Not only does this folding method hide any sort of mess, but it prevents the royals from staining their dressy attire. A definite win-win. Additionally, while there are plenty of occasions during which it wouldn't be possible for the royals to follow this unique protocol, it is tradition for them to use this tip during family dinners. If you're invited to a royal dinner, you should hope you're not the 13th guest on the list. That's because, according to royal commentator Phil Dampier, the queen won't allow 13 people to sit down at a dinner party. This isn't down to her own superstitions, however, so much as it is her worry that dinner guests might be reluctant to be labeled with the assumed unlucky number. And that's not the only step the royals take to avoid something bad happening. A documentary about the royal kitchens previously revealed that the dinner plates at a state dinner are served at random to avoid a possible assassination assassination attempt. In the documentary, royal correspondent Emily Andrews disclosed that this was done so that if anyone did want to poison the queen, they'd have to poison everybody else at the dinner too. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.